Welcome to Martini Time. The, uh, it's been a beautiful day here in Blackstone. I uh, was sitting out by the pond. By, I have a little Buddha pond. I sit out there and it was very comfortable and no mosquitoes. Uh, uh, and I was reading uh, Joseph Campbell. I found a, I lent this book, uh, one of my books, to uh, somebody and they returned it and I'd forgotten I had lent it and I'd forgotten I'd read it. So I'm enjoying another book. Um, I read Joseph Campbell. Uh, about every 10 years I read these books. <laughs> I've been reading them since 1970. And uh, reading Joseph Campbell, who was a mythologist, um, who has revolutionized our understanding of mythology, um, it's, it, it, it is such an expansion of your of my of your understanding when you read his works because the his understanding of mythology and connecting dots uh, connecting and comparing uh, Western and Eastern mythologies and different cultures and it's this connecting the dots and and uh, that that makes his mind leap to a greater understanding or picture or whole. So his, his whole study has been kind of like the uh, dialectic of evolution, where you study this and you study that and then you see the, the connection between the two and you go, aha, and you get a bigger whole. So the, the uh, let me put this down. So the Evolution of our consciousness works that way. Uh, it's like this. You have the left and the right, and, and when you're able to see that both of these opposites, left and the right, liberals, republicans, <laughs> secular, religious, all of these opposites, these uh, um, divisions or polarization of our society are one. In other words, but, but when we identify with one or the other, we see the other one as the enemy. And I'm the victim. I'm innocent. You're guilty, you see. So you get back and forth. And all we get is this, you see. But when we see them both as one, there is a A sound of awakening. There's the sound of consciousness when you see that you see the one and the two. Now when we watch um, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers dance um, or any other ice dancing, any other professional artist, couple, they dance as one. And that's what we're enthralled with that. You can't separate them. They just flow as one. And yet, neither one seems to be leading the other. They just spontaneously move together as one. The two that is one. And that's consciousness. Um, you see, so the, the world is made up of dualities. And consciousness is constantly putting them together. So when you put them together, you make this leap of consciousness. Oh, I see the one that is two. So consciousness, enlightenment, is this awakening. Enlightenment, we think it's always this big, uh, when Jesus comes or whatever, some big pie in the sky. No, it's just insight. <laughs> it's just seeing the one that is two. And whenever we see the two, we're always in a little bit of a double bind. If you choose one, you're missing the other. You can't choose to contradict each other, just like these hands are opposites, you see. So if you choose one, this is the one hand. No, what about me? What about me? No, this is the one hand. Well, what about me? What about me? See, you have to put these together. Then you get the one that is two. But they're still two, but now they're one. And this is really what consciousness is all about. 
Zen is called Satori or Kensho. You see, uh, and so it's this it's this coming together of the many uh, to be the one. And this is what uh, Joseph Campbell uh, did in his work was help us see the the one that is in all of the many mythologies. And of course, that one is in us. <laughs> you see. That's the final, that's the leap, you see. So when I say, uh, here we are in Blackstone, and I say, uh, the center of the world, but then you too are the center of the world. Well, then I think of this. Now, this uh, a friend of mine did this. It's a mandala. And if you're into Eastern studies or yoga or just art, uh, you see a mandala. And uh, even Navajo paintings, uh, Tibetan paintings, all spiritual paintings, they're all like this. They're all a circle, you see. And there's a center here, but it's usually empty. It's like, a, it's like the, the hub of a wheel, you see. Uh, Buddhism, the symbol of Buddhism is a wheel. It's called the Dharma wheel. You see, all the spokes go there. We understand a wheel. The wagon won't go without a wheel. And if your car is out of, if a wheel is out of alignment, you get a wobble, you see. So we have a big wobble in our country today. We're out of alignment. Um, each wheel on the cart says, I'm the only wheel. <laughs> the other one's bad. Get rid of it, you see. But anyway, in the, this, this is a shift in consciousness. This is, this is a, this is a uh, the mandala represents a shift in consciousness from being on the, uh, seeing a fragmented world, a shift in consciousness from seeing a pond with ripple. You know, if you go sit by a pond like I was today, and if there's no breeze, it perfectly reflects the sky and the tree. You look in the pond, and there is the, there is the clouds and the tree and the bird flying over. It's a perfect reflection. But there's one thought, one ripple, one breeze, it ooh, breaks up, you see. Well, then the world we're living in, the material world of the modern world, is the pond broken up by ripples, you see. And so we, we keep thinking, well, if I just grab this rip, this wave, this, this little ripple reflects this guy. This is the truth, you see. But it's moving, so there's nothing to hold on to. There's no ripple you can hold on to that will restore the clarity of the still pond. So there has to be a shift in you, not in the world. The world's not going to shift because you are the world and the world is you. You know, the world you experience is a reflection of you. So you can't change. It's like the mirror has a reflection. You're the mirror. The world is a reflection in your mind and you're disturbed by it. It's not right. It's all polo polarized, fragmented painful, you see. So he try to fix the reflections. <laughs> it doesn't work. You fix the reflections, the reflections are still reflected in you. You see, because you're not, you know, the mirror is different from the reflections, but you can't separate them. You see, the mirror is, is reflects what it is, and they are different. The mirror and the reflection are different, but you can't separate them. You see, so the one and the many are different, but you can't separate them. And th this, is the, this is the trick or the paradox of consciousness. And when we see that the world I perceive is just like the, the disturbance on the pond, and that all my efforts to make the pond smooth with my hand, I get down there and try to smooth out the pond to bring clarity and peace back to my mind, I'm making the ripples. And the moment I see that, the moment I see that I, my hand in trying to bring peace to the pond is disturbing the pond, the moment I see that, there is a shift. And consciousness shifts, maybe for a moment, maybe for an instant, it shifts to the center. And then all, and then suddenly the world, because now you are the world and the world is you, you're at your center the world suddenly becomes clear because you're no longer trying to smooth and make the reflection clear, you see? 
As soon as you stop making the reflections of your mind, which is the world, be still, the mind becomes still and everything snaps into place. But in this practice, the, the, the karma, the inertia of the ripples in the world comes back and now you lose it. It's kind of, you know, you go on a, you go, go to a retreat. Oh, I'm so peaceful. And you come back to the world and the job and the house and the family and all of that and it's all gone. You say, where did it go? Or you go on a vacation to the beach and you, oh, it's so peaceful and you go back to work. Where did it go? You see, you're back into this disturbed pond. So this practice of meditation, of insight meditation, of mindfulness, which is what I do, is the practice of making these leaps to see the whole that was fragmented. It's an insight. Oh, I suddenly I connect the dots. I see the bigger picture. Whereas before I just saw the mini pictures and none of them fit together. It's kind of like looking at a, you know, a puzzle or something and you can't get the pieces to fit. Well, insight, meditation, insight, insight, meditation, mindfulness, awakening is all about having the attention, intention to see, not to fix anything, just to see, not to smooth it out, not to take sides, not to destroy the other person, not to blame myself or the other, but to see. And then when the pond clears and calms and you see the world as it is, then you act according to that. And your action will be creative instead of reactive. Big difference. A reaction is basically reacting to the ripples in your own mind. A creative response to reality is just that. It's going to be spontaneous because it's creative. Creative means spontaneous. It's not coming from what you did before. In fact, if you're spontaneous, you don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> That's why I like these talks. They're spontaneous. I don't know what I'm going to say. And it's a little scary to step in here, but after I get going, it feels pretty good. You see, <laughs> feels good. Consciousness feels good. Being awake feels good. You feel centered. You, you feel at the center of the world. You are at the center of the world. And wherever you go, you're always at the center, just like on a GPS navigator. Wherever you go on a GPS navigator, you're always at the center. The world boots around you. You're not on a map, you are the map. If you go here, you go there, you're always going home. This may take a little longer, that may not. You're always going home. The world boots around you. You're at the center of the world. That's the shift. That's, that's what people are talking about when you say enlightenment, awakening, self-realization, salvation, whatever, kingdom of heaven, all of these words are not about something in time, about getting to it when you smooth the pond, but it's about seeing that the pond is already smooth and that the ripples are just fragments of your own mind that you stirred up trying to get to the smooth, clear pond. So thanks for dropping in. I'll see you tomorrow.